Hello everyone and welcome to International Space Station Assembly Redux. You might have wondered why I posted two International Space Station Assembly videos and then didn't really post much after that and that's because things got a little bit too messed up. And of course that was my first attempt and I said so in the first video, first attempt. And this is my second attempt. Uh, there was just too much that was deviating from the path of how it was supposed to be assembled for me to be satisfied with how that was going. So here we go, once again launching the Zarya module on a Proton K, and we're going to try and get it a little bit more right this time. I'm not going to guarantee that it's going to be perfect, but um, ignore the little uh, countdown clock in the corner. I had issues with that particular mod. There's a better version of it from Linux Guru Gamer now, but this is an old version of KSP. So here we go, uh, launching Zarya and Fairing Sep, and there it is. So yeah, uh, actually I had done a lot more as far as live streams are concerned on the assembly of the other ISS, the one that went badly wrong. And yeah, it was just getting worse and worse and worse. Most of what we were doing was patching up mistakes in what I had done before. So let's try and do it cleanly as, as cleanly as possible this time. So we are of course launching at the right time. There the third stage cuts out and Zarya separates from the third stage. So here we have it, and we've got it at a better inclination this time. Last time it was more like 50.4. Now we're at 51.4, which is closer to where it ought to be. And we are going to use Zarya's fuel to boost it up to a better altitude. In the previous version, it was like 300 kilometers by 300 kilometers-ish. This time we're going for the full 400 by 400. Actually, I think it's 430 by 430 is what I aim for because that produces a good orbital period to allow us to phase back with either Cape Canaveral or Baikonur. You really need an orbital period that's evenly visible by by uh, 24 hours, or actually in this case it was 48 hours. It evenly divides by two days. So with all that set up, I launch Endeavor with the Unity module on STS-88 and of course uh, PMA-1 and PMA-2. In fact, one of the problems was uh, one of the pressurized mating adapters was supposed to be able to be moved to a different location from the Unity module and in the old version I had made it sort of permanently attached. So now we have uh, a PMA module that can be moved from lo one location to another as will be necessary during the construction of the space station. So there goes the shuttle. And also the launch script for the shuttle is uh, somewhat improved so that it hits the right inclination and doesn't require too much inclination correction. And that will help uh, with saving fuel. Unfortunately, uh, one problem is still the actual timing of the launch. It really has to be very precisely timed as far as when it starts starts out, otherwise it's going to still have a relative inclination. And it ends up, I think, with a 0.8 degree relative inclination this time. Not horrible, but still not what we want. We would like it directly in line, so it doesn't need to correct that. And that will help us avoid any fuel problems coming back. Okay, so the shell has rolled around, and uh, completing the part that the external tank is responsible for. There we go. Good, external tank off, and now we will uh, go to Apoapsis for the OMS burn. And this time we're not carrying a tug, we're just carrying Canadarm, and Canadarm will do the thing with the Unity module. Now I've got some practice with that, though as we will see, it's not entirely a straightforward sort of situation, but I am more confident in Canadarm now. And of course dropping the tug helps us with our fuel situation in the orbiter. You'll see me here positioning Canadarm basically to block the way of Unity because after all we're going to have to decouple it from the shuttle in order to grab it with the arm. We can't grab it with the arm while it's still docked to the shuttle. And so we basically want to make sure that once we release Unity from the shuttle its path is blocked and it doesn't float off. So here we are trying to actually attach it. It's already decoupled from the shuttle. And we're waiting for a sound indicating connection. And there's that sound. So now it has uh, indicated that it's connected and the arm is capable of moving it. So all we need to do is actually dock Unity, the right, the correct end of Unity, onto the shuttle zone docking port. But before we do that, we maneuver a little bit closer to Zarya. And 
and make sure that we're in a station keeping position so we're not moving closer or further away. And then we proceed to uh, try and get Unity onto that docking port. Now, in a moment, you're going to notice uh, increasing oscillations. And there's sort of an interesting physical problem. Um, something starts to sort of resonate, if you will. Uh, there's a little bit of rocky motion on one side, a little bit of rocky motion on the other side, and it keeps, like, uh, correcting. This is... I don't know if you could call it pilot-induced oscillation, computer-induced oscillation, but it's definitely happening and increasing. Right now, you'll note that Smart ASS is on kill rotate was on kill rotation. I took it off to sort of because I noted this thing happening, but that did not help. Uh, so it's not stabilizing. No SAS on. Nothing is actually controlling it. You note the roll, yaw, and pitch are zeroed. So this is a pure sort of resonance issue going on here. And the question is how to solve this? I'll leave you some time to come up with your own solution. What should you do in this situation? What is the problem? Why is it doing this? Would you just decide to go to Space Center and try and come back? What would you do? It's getting worse. I like how the music, uh, the music was on uh, auto shuffle and uh, it just decided to play this very dramatic song <laughs> right at this point. So yeah, I don't know whether the song is to blame, no of course not, but we've definitely got a problem here and I'm pondering possible solutions and eventually I try a few things like SAS, you know SAS is on here, I try to manually stabilize it. So, last chance to propose your own solution. We're coming up on uh, what I figured out. It's still wiggling quite severely. What would you do? SAS didn't work. Obviously, kill rotation on Smart ASS not going to work. I tried again anyway. Ah, turning off fine controls. It was on fine controls earlier. And now I turn fine controls off, and the shuttle has the uh, command authority, the control authority, to now stabilize itself. And eventually, with it being stable, Unity will also stabilize, so the oscillations will dampen out, and things will be back to normal. And so, we were able to proceed with docking it on the docking port in preparation with docking the other side to Zarya. So there you go. Uh, if you've got fine controls on, you might want to turn them off when stuff like that happens. Okay, trying to get the docking ports to be convinced that they're ready to dock. Come on. There we go. There we go. And now we can release the arm. Alright, and move it back. And then we can begin docking procedures with Zarya. We also have to make sure to rotate the module. Right now we haven't really rotated the module in any particular way on the shuttle's docking port. You can see it's a bit of skew, but that's alright and it is whatever is convenient for the arm really. The arm really couldn't get in any other way once we grappled onto the Unity module. But here we are drifting towards Zarya. You'll notice that we have 251 meters per second with the Unity module connected. We have maybe about 300 without it. Um, normally I would want 400 to be able to deorbit. Oh, uh, ignore it now. It's not controlling from the docking port, so it's not reading properly. Here we are docking with Zarya. And there we go. But normally I would want 400 meters per second, so I decide to try and do a refueling mission again, even though that's not technically in the ISS assembly script. But for you purists out there, don't worry, uh, this doesn't work. <laughs> so we, we ultimately had to bring the shuttle back down without refueling it, so the cannon is still okay. We, we, we still have uh, a good legit ISS assembly, so the problem was You'll note the relative inclination here, and this progress module, progress spacecraft, 
doesn't really have the delta V to bring up the fuel load that we're carrying as well as correct that inclination. So we basically have to abandon this guy. Uh, you can see it's got 190 meters per second. It's trying to correct inclination and uh, do the rendezvous burn here. It's just not a good thing. I guess the ironic thing about not having enough fuel in the shuttle, unlike, you know, like driving a car or something normal, when you don't have enough fuel in the shuttle, it's not that it doesn't go far enough. It's that it overshoots. Because what the RCS is required for is keeping the shuttle's nose up so that it increases drag. The higher you tilt the nose up, the more drag you have. So if you don't have enough fuel to keep the nose up, and it, the shuttle itself can still manage about a 30-35 degree pitch without the RCS as it's balanced right now in this mission. Uh, the thing is that we were going fast enough that it really needed to tilt above 40 degrees and it couldn't really do that. So because it didn't have the fuel for that, it ended up going further uh, and overshooting. Not by much by the way as you'll soon see. One reason we take so much fuel by the way is because we have to make sure to get into an orbit that phases correctly so that Cape Canaveral will be under the shuttle when we try and return. Still working on that, still working on the timing of it. Again, it's sort of like timing launches and launch windows. You have to have a landing window as well. But uh, yeah, still working on that. And the shuttle's cross range doesn't work quite the way I would like it to, you know, when you roll the shuttle in order to try and change its trajectory. Doesn't seem to have the same effect uh, right now as one would expect, so. And it's sort of tough to do that, especially when you don't have enough fuel. One thing you want the fuel for is to roll the shuttle to correct its trajectory, and if you don't have enough fuel, you can't do that until you get to the thicker part of the atmosphere where the aerodynamic surfaces can work. So you can see here our path. Uh, it's a little bit north of Cape Canaveral, obviously, but the, the landing program, it's not really a landing program, the descent program is pretty good at getting us to Florida. It's just about timing the return properly, making sure that... And, you know, unlike launching where you can see that the target's orbit is right above your own, uh, because it takes some time to land, you can't really see where Cape Canaveral necessary... Well, we're, I'm working on trying to estimate where Cape Canaveral will be at the right time. Uh, the thing overheating is actually a strut in the cargo bay. It's not important. I don't know why it was overheating, but... There it is. This is Florida. We are currently flying over Florida and I'm, I took manual control in order to try and turn it and slow it down. But we don't have any fuel, so it was all aerodynamics and that wasn't good enough. Ultimately, instead of uh, turning south towards Cape Canaveral, I decided to try and aim for the closest land instead. And that turned out to be South Carolina. And so here we are aimed at the coast of South Carolina. I think that's Charleston area or something like that. I will check the map in a second. I'll show you where it's at. I noted a uh, sort of airport on the texture. So there's the sort of city lights ground texture that we've got there. And there was an airport there. So I decided to make for the airport. Why not? And so you can sort of see the runway there. And that's where we are. Very much uh, South Carolina, maybe close to the border of North Carolina there. Okay, and there we are, lined up Riffo runway. The textures are fuzzy, but you can tell it's an airport. So it counts. I tried. I still don't like how only one side of the air brakes is um, deploying. That's not something in the menu or some sort of flaw in the action grouping or anything like that. That's just how it is. So I don't know what to do about that. But anyway, here we go. Oh, that's my uh, follower alert in Twitch. This is, of course, all done during a Twitch live stream. Okay, and... Come on, come on! Oh, uh, unfortunately staging meant that I didn't get the parachute out. And I've actually, I've still got two drag shoots, sorry, for purists, I've still got two of them. 
That's because I couldn't. Uh, the body of the shell is such that attaching one of them is not very good, and would actually start causing us to. Well, we still went off to one side, but it de would definitely cause us to go to one side. It's weird. Uh, the hitbox on the CSS shuttle is weird. But anyway, on that note, we have delivered the beginning of the International Space Station. Zarya and Unity are in orbit. The shuttle was brought back down to a runway. And things are off to an okay start. At least better than they were last time. So, on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.